Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled, Before Engrandizing Your Flight Experience, Know Who You Are Talking To, and Don't Make Arrogant Boasts You Don't Intend on Honoring. Now, uh, when I started out, I was surrounded by a lot of experienced pilots, like most pilots are, because they're brand new. Uh, in the Air Force, a lot of very interesting, competent pilots. Uh, went out to uh, the flight test center. Of course, I was out there with, uh, you know, rubbing out elbows with aviation legends. So there, there was a lot of real cool people. So I knew enough kind of to keep, uh, you know, my stories to myself. You know, they, they, they weren't that exciting. I didn't have that much to say. So you, you can gain a lot more by listening than talking. So it was a really fun time. And going to the airlines, a lot of experienced people there and just, uh, just a lot to learn. So uh, I really, en I really enjoyed it. And I just sucked up the information. Now I'm flying my wife, uh, and I into Sioux city, Iowa to visit her mother there. We're, we're coming for a little weekend trip. So I, uh, come in there and I park my, uh, 310, uh, at the uh, fixed base operator there in Sioux city. And a guy comes in and is uh, 172, and it's obvious he uh, has what appears to be, I guess, a cross-country student. And, and we briefly say hello and that. And then uh, we, we uh, separate. And funny thing was, we happened to end up at the same uh, restaurant for a uh, late breakfast. So we're sitting there, and he, he recognizes me, and he goes, oh, that's a real nice 310 you have there. And uh, he was uh, he's telling me about how he's a very experienced flight instructor, and getting good flight instruction is extremely important. And, um, I should, you know, know the value of that. And he has an extensive amount of time as a, as a flight instructor. And, um, you know, these twins can be very complex, very difficult to fly. And I really should make sure I keep up on everything and have good instruction and all that. My, my wife's, uh, over there trying not to grin too much. And, uh, I mentioned, I go, well, um, that, that's very interesting that you should mention that. Uh, and, and he mentioned that he was qualified in all the Cessna twins and he was qualified to teach in all the Cessna twins, which I, I at one time was qualified in all the Cessna twins when I in, uh, was a, uh, a pilot at uh, Cessna flight test, but um, I didn't consider myself really qualified in them anymore. I just had this one twin. So I said, well, um, I said, that's very interesting that you're qualified in all the Cessna twins and you can teach all of them. I said, I'm only qualified in two twins. I said the, uh, the, the Cessna 310 and the Boeing 777. And he goes, oh, that's very, oh, what? And uh, that got his attention. And then he said, and, uh, and he said, yeah, I said, I, I'm only qualified in, in two twins, but I offset that with uh, uh, around 20,000 hours of, you know, flight time in twins. And I go, well, wait a minute, I corrected myself. I said, I'm sorry there. So a uh, couple thousand hours of that's in tri-motor. So it's, it's not all twin time, but uh he became very quiet after that. All right. Earlier, when I was in the Air Force, I'm out at Edwards, and I'm getting to fly the F-104. We're doing uh, simulated space shuttle approaches. I talk about those in another video, because that's really cool. And I'm flying with uh, Bill Dana, who um, flew the last X-15 mission out at, uh, yeah, at uh, NASA Dryden there, um, at Edwards. And... Um, he, he later became head of, uh, well, Dryden, uh, became Armstrong and Bill Dana became head of it, but we're, um, we're in the, uh, the NASA uh, little building there and, uh, we're going down the hallway and, and we run into, uh, this other pilot and, uh, he introduces him to me and, uh, Fitz Fulton wasn't a name that rung any bells with me, but, um, uh, Bill introduced Fitz to me as one of the world's greatest glider pilots. And I said, oh, that's real interesting. I said, I had just flown a, a glider just wet last week, and it was my very first time, and it was really interesting, and I, I really had a lot of fun with it. And uh, Fitz said, oh, that, that's very interesting. Yeah, gliders are a lot of fun. And then, then he walks away. And Bill says, well, I, I, I should have told you, he, he's not kind of your normal glider pilot. He's He's flown... X-24 and a few of these lifting bodies. And he and I flew the X-15 together. So I'm thinking, oh boy, did I put my foot in my mouth there? <laughs> and, I, and I said, I should be more careful. And Bill's, ah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Well, as far as making uh, arrogant promises uh, or challenges that you have no intention of adhering to, 
The very first bomb I ever dropped was in an A-37. I'm in a, a unit. We're going down to Savannah, Georgia, to the range down there. A whole unit's going down there. And I've got an instructor. And this is my first introduction to dropping bombs in an A-37. Now, this was a reserve unit. So I didn't go to any formal school. And uh, the A-37 was out of the formal inventory. I don't think they had a formal school anywhere. So it's just kind of a local checkout sort of thing. So there's no big briefings on philosophy, physics, and all this stuff. We just kind of, he talks to me about what we're going to do. We're going to drop these little BDU 33s, these little bluey bombs with a smoke charge, and we're going to go up and we're going to do some flying. And we're going to drop these on the range. And I go, okay. I had read a little bit about it and, and I kind of knew what to expect, but there was this very arrogant individual and he says, well, let's, you know, we are going in the same flight there to the range. He says, well, let's bet on, let's bet on how good we do on the bombing. And I said, hey, this is my first time you know, I've never dropped a bomb in my life and you want me to bet you? And he says, oh, you're chicken. You don't want to bet. And I said, okay, okay. If you want me to buy you a few beers, I'll buy you a few beers. Don't worry about it. We'll go ahead and we'll bet on the events if that'll make you happy. Well, we go to the range. Now I must admit, I, I inadvertently cheated. Um, because like I said, I'd never dropped a bomb before. This is an old iron bomb site. It's really, I mean, you, you got the Kentucky windage, uh, you know, there was no, co uh, computing bomb site or anything. You, uh, uh, you did it all your own. And so I do the computation and, and we're rolling in on the target and, uh, I release and, uh, I pull off and the guy calls back shack. And I say to my instructor, I go, what's that? And my instructor says, smart, you know, word I probably shouldn't repeat on here. And I said, no, I'm serious. I thought it was a clock position and a distance from the target. And he goes, oh, that means you hit a bullseye. Oh, so come back around. I, I don't remember what I did on, on the other two events, but I beat the other guy two out of three events. Now, the, the, the part about when I said I cheated a little bit here, um, I did the calculation on the release point. My instructor, every time I got right up to the release point, this is a five degree, uh, dive bomb. So you're coming in shallow, but every time I got up to the release point, I saw his hand coming for this stick and, and he was, he was, he was looking concerned and, uh, you know, we're going back there and he says, he says, man, you looked awful low, but every time, you know, you released right, right where you, you briefed, you were going to release, you know? And I said, well, I, you know, I, I took the elevation of the target and I added a hundred feet for the release altitude. And he goes, no, it's 200 feet. So, you know, the closer you get to the target, somewhat the more accurate could be. So, uh, yeah, I was cheating a little bit, but uh, we, we never told anybody about that. But, all right, we get to the bar. This guy is so embarrassed and he's getting razzed by the other uh, pilots in our squadron there about how this new guy on his first time beat him at the range. We didn't mention the cheating part. Uh, it, it was an inverting, but uh, how this new guy had beat him. Do you think he ever bought me those beers? No. Okay. If you're going to razz a guy, you're going to try to, uh, you know, have an advantage of him going to the range, you know, fess up. If you lose, buy the beers. So that's my story. This is my final flight in the, uh, um, the triple seven, my retirement flight out of Maui, got a water cannon. But if you're going to go bragging to other pilots, kind of know who you're talking to because your stories might not be as good as theirs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this funny little group of stories here. Thanks for watching.